Good evening, everybody. I'm Mary O'Connor with the Alaskan Aviation Safety Foundation. I would like to say thank you to Alaska Public Media and to the National Institute for Occupational Safety and Health for allowing me to bring you hangar flying today. This evening, we are happy to have Jenny Sandlin back on our show. Jenny is an air traffic controller at Anchorage Center and is part of the Alaska Region Safety Outreach Team. This evening, we are going to hear from Jenny about how she got started as an air traffic controller and about her job at Anchorage Center. Welcome back on the show, Jenny. Mary. Anchorage Center is pretty unique among the 21 air route traffic control centers in the United States. Anchorage has more military airspace than any other and also includes at least 33 active volcanoes. So you're an air traffic control specialist at Anchorage Center. This is also an oceanic center. There's a lot going on. Can you tell us what you do in your job? Where to start, Mary? <laughs> um, gosh, uh, Anchorage Center is unique. Uh, it is not like any other center out there. Um, I work one of three different specialties. Um, it's called the North Area, but it's not really north. It's north and it's west and it's south. Um, we've got almost 400 airports that we control the approaches into, um, so that alone is just very different from any other center out there. Um, <laughs> what how can far I say? west? How far west and north do you go? So my airspace starts uh, basically point at uh, Mount McKinley and goes all the way to the North Pole. I speak with Canadian controllers on the right. I speak with Russian controllers on the left. Um, uh, Reykjavik, Iceland on the north side, and it's huge. Some of our sectors are 1,200, 1,300 miles long. Um, it's a huge amount of airspace. That is huge. It is. How long have you been doing this? I started ATC. I actually have a terminal background. I started at Merrill um, 19 years ago, and so a few years at Merrill, uh, a few years at Anchorage Tower, and I went center uh, about 12 years ago. Um, started with the FAA um, in 93 as their Russian interpreter. And then I did that for about three, four years before I went ATC. Oh, wow. So. And how did you get interested in air traffic control? Well, it, working as a Russian interpreter, uh, we got all our routes established with Russia. And then they, I was doing airspace studies with no ATC background, so they just kind of came to me and said, would you like to go ATC? <laughs> but I really didn't know what it was. <laughs> so, oh, wow. So you wouldn't have imagined that you'd be doing this job. I had no idea. I had no idea what it was and who these people were and what they did, no. But it sounds like a perfect fit. I love it. I love it. It's the best job out there. Have you worked anywhere besides Alaska? Uh, no, just military. It was military out of high school in Germany, and that's where I learned my Russian. And so once I got out of the military, I came to Alaska and started right up with the FAA. And what brought you to Alaska? Uh, marriage. <laughs> <laughs> yep. That'll do it. <laughs> um, so back to controllers. They have a mandatory retirement age, so mm -hmm. you can't do this. As much as you enjoy this job, you can't do it. No. Um, for necessarily as long as you might like to. Um, so what is this age and what options exist for controllers when um, they're forced to move on? on that? Um, well, it, so we can retire at, uh, after 20 years of, we call it good time, good ATC time, uh, if you're age 50. Okay? Otherwise, you can retire at 25 years of service at any age. Um, the mandatory retirement is age 56. So um, at age 56, you need to have progressed into a, either a management spot or a staff position, something that is not requiring currency on the floor. So. Okay, so currency on the floor is the only one that has the real age limit. It is. It's, it's, the, it's the controllers and it's the supervisors out there on the floor. Yes, they have to at least maintain a, um, a familiarity proficiency out there on the floor. Okay. So then all management positions are filled by people pretty much that have had their, their tw at least a minimum of 20 years in controlling traffic? Not necessarily, and that's changed a lot over recent years actually, but um, so no, there's, there's, there's plenty of folks that progress into the management ranks at earlier ages. And can you tell us quickly, what's the best part of the job? Quickly, huh? <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Gosh, you know, I love talking to the pilots. I love providing the service. I love um, giving them all the necessary information that I can to, to make good decisions, to make their job easier. Um, there's nothing bad about the job. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Jenny. We really appreciate being able to put a name to a voice um, for us pilots out there that's really helpful. And we appreciate you coming on the show and sharing a bit about your job and what you do. Thanks, Mary. Ladies and gentlemen, we hope you've learned a little bit about some of the people that work to keep the skies over Alaska safe. Thank you for watching Hangar Flying, and until next time, Fly safely.